G'day everyone. Recently I did a shoot using SLR Magic lenses. Now these are sign lenses and it's uh, something I've never done before. Uh, I have done manual focusing but only using the Sony lenses. Um, so this was a real experience to me. Um, Aaron contacted me from CR Kennedy who asked if I would be interested to do it. I thought, well, yeah, why not? Um, so I decided to do it with a dancer. Uh, and it was a really interesting shoot. And I'm going to take you through the whole shoot. I'm also going to show you what gear I used and things like that. Uh, and I will put the link down below so you can have a look at the full video as well so you can see the finished product. Um, but I was quite nervous because uh, I really am just a photographer that also does some video. I, I sort of think myself, I, I call myself a fusion where I'm doing video and stills often at the same time or hybrid shooter. Um, so this was the first time that I'd ever used something like sign lenses. Uh, and it was really interesting. Uh, they are manual focus, so there's no autofocus involved with them. Uh, and I used, I did have a whole stack of them to use, but I ended up using three of them. Uh, I wanted to use the 75 because it's very close to the focal length that I use, which is an 85 uh, for a beautiful portrait type look. Uh, and I'll, uh, so I wanted to use that and I'll show you results that I'm getting off that now so you can get an idea why I wanted to use that. Uh, it does give that beautiful separation from the background uh, and it really is very flattering when you go up very, very close. So I actually use this on a gimbal uh, and, I, uh, I, and I'll show you the setup of how the whole gimbal was set up and how my tripods were set up a little bit later. But I did use this on a gimbal. Um, and I just basically followed Elise around uh, and it did give that lovely separation also when she was walking it was beautiful to see her walking as well uh, with it uh, and even though I shot at f4 I didn't want to go too shallow because I was as I've never really done this before I didn't want to sort of go right down this for instance will go down to uh, f uh, or t 1.5 but I was a bit nervous about going that shallow and I didn't really think I needed to so most of the video that you'll see I've, I've shot at f4 and I think the separation is still beautiful at F4. It's more than enough and it still shows detail in the background of the waterfalls uh, and things like that, which is really nice. So I did shoot usually at F4. Um, so that's the main lens that I used. Well, I should say the main portrait lens that I used was the 75. Um, the other two lenses that I used uh, was uh, this. So I used um, this one here is the 18. Now this is a T2.8. Uh, lens uh, so I use this uh, quite extensively as well to get more of the environment in uh, I wanted to get you know like uh, like a lot of the beautiful scenery with, that was there uh, so this was the lens that, lens that I wanted to use for that uh, and I'll be showing uh, images from this uh, as we're talking so you'll get an idea about what I was talking about they are all an 82 millimeter um, uh, ND or filter thread on them. So what I did was, I'll show you the 35 mil anyway. Uh, that's got the ND on it. Um, so really all I had to do was, uh, because I was shooting at 1080p 50, uh, I, I had to shoot obviously at 1 100th. Uh, and all I did was keep the ISO as low as possible. Uh, set the aperture which I said was around f4 and then I used the ND filter to get the appropriate exposure and I'll show that uh, in the monitors that I was using. Um, it really worked quite well. I am incredibly impressed with um, how the lenses uh, actually feel in the hand. Like I said this was the 35mm. This is a T1.3 uh, uh, lens so you really could open these up if you were struggling for low light scenario or you really want to blow the background out um, these this the 35 particularly is a really really fast lens uh, but the build quality of these lens is absolutely superb um, they really do feel like a tank I wouldn't say they're over heavy but they're not a light lens but they are beautifully made and they probably last you a lifetime uh, you know they do have um, the ability to attach your focus uh, um, tools with this, which I'll show you when I show you uh, how I did this shoot. Um, but beautiful. Uh, aperture is just a, a ring down the bottom and then your um, focus is the ring up the top. Um, hard stops, which is great after you're used to using the fly-by-wire on the Sony lenses. So if you are trying to rack focus and things like that, you can do this reliably, which is really amazing. Um, but just beautiful. I mean, in fact, I don't want to give them back, but they really are gorgeous to use and I'm very, very happy with, uh, with how it turned out. Um, so what we'll do now is we'll have a look at the setup that I used so you'll see how I did it and that will show the tripod and it'll also show um, my gimbal that I used. I was using two cameras on the day. I used the Sony A9 and the Sony A7 III uh, on the day. 
Uh, and so we'll look at the hardware that I use now. All right, so let me show you how this was all set up. So what I used, I used the Miller tripod. So if we come down here, you'll see what this is. So this is the Solo 75. Um, it's the rapid lock system and it does go really high, but basically I just uh, use this for the level uh, underneath and then I um, set it up to about the height of the dancer actually. I'm just moving this gimbal around a little bit. Um, so let's have a look at the camera setup itself, so how I've got this all set up. Now, it is actually on a slider. Now I'm using the Elder Chrome, so it's an Elder Chrome, uh, I think this is the Slider Plus, it's a small version uh, that I'm using. I'm also using an Elder Chrome uh, plate here. Now I wanted to put it on that so that it can just twist to where I want it to go. I just didn't want to have a, a big head with me. I wanted to keep it as small as I possibly could, even though this is still quite a big setup. Um, and then obviously it's got rails that are connected to this Elder Crown system that I've got at the back here, and I'll show you just around the back um, how this looks. This, this is uh, a device where these come out and it can actually um, attach to your belt, so you can use this uh, on its own with uh, a follow focus that I'm using through here as well. So this is quite a nice system, and it just um, screws in with this big wheel here onto your camera so it sits it down really uh, nicely. So you can see how the slider works uh, through here. So it does get double its length. Now you do need a good tripod like this so that it doesn't um, obviously fall over because there's a fair bit of weight if you look at what's on this, you know, the whole setup here, it's, it's quite heavy. Uh, and it does have a lock that you can sit through here so then it won't move uh, as it goes off. And I found that slider works very, very well. Um, so what else have we got? Now, this is the 35mm that I've got here, so I was using that. I used, um, on the day, it was the 18mm, the 35 and the 75 uh, on various systems, and I'll show another system that I used as well, so you can have a look at that too. Um, now, the follow focus um, is this setup, so it's a Lampart system. Now, it's just attached through here onto these two rails that, that come in, and you can move this in and out uh, obviously through here and also through here that will let it go sideways as well as coming backwards and forwards So that's how that locks in it does have an ND on there, which I use to control exposure Because um, I wanted to use 1080p 50. I did want to use 4k uh, 50 But unfortunately the Sony cameras don't allow that so I couldn't use that so I did just have to use uh, the ND on uh, to adjust the exposure uh, the Lampart Follow focus system is quite good. You can obviously move your points around if you wanted to set focus, um, you know, for, between two objects uh, and, and sort of zoom or rack focus between the two of them. Um, excuse me if I don't use the correct language because, like I said, I'm a photographer, not really a videographer, so uh, this was all new to me. But I did find this system worked really well and it was very, very smooth and I really like using it. Uh, you know, I was a little bit anxious at first using completely manual focus lenses because I thought it would be a real problem, but it wasn't due to the system that I've actually got here. Um, I am using the Ninja V uh, that you can see here. Uh, it's got the battery pack on it and also got the Atom X uh, hard drive on there, which is the 500 gigabyte uh, hard drive. And it's got a small rig cage that is sitting on uh, there as well to hold that in. The camera itself has got a small rig cage that I'm using due to the fact that you don't want to be putting these monitors onto the Sony hot shoe because the hot shoe itself is the weak point of these cameras and you have got the potential to break um, this hot shoe off so it's better far better to put it onto you know like a, a cage or something like that which takes all the weight off the system uh, so the cage itself is sitting on this small rig adapter that you just screw in on here so you can see I've got the cage that's on the Ninja V uh, I can just screw that in and then the, this actually just sits onto uh, this rail. Now the good part about that is I can just clip that off and then you can move it to wherever you wanted it to go. Um, these will tilt backwards or forwards if you want to go. They'll even turn around if you wanted to go um, and spin them around as well so I could face me for instance if I wanted to as well. So they're very great, they're, they're really good these small rig uh, adapters uh, and I love using those. Um, so really all I would then do, obviously, to get exposure is, uh, or, or focus, and this is what made it so easy, because I just go onto monitor, and then once you click onto monitor, I can then click onto there, and then I can use that for focus peaking, because I found that the focus peaking itself 
uh, on the Sony cameras is not that reliable. Where it's nice, this is very reliable if you're using it through um, the Ninja V. And I found that worked great. So I could then monitor uh, by looking at that red outline. You can obviously change the color if you want to. Um, but that's how I got my focus and it worked very, very well. Like I said, I was really anxious about it and I didn't need to. So to get exposure, all I did was I'll click on here and I could get the waveform up. Um, and then all I would do is just make sure that when I was uh, getting exposure that I didn't clip past 100 for the highlights. Uh, you know, and I could sort of set it in. I'd, I'd set it down here at um, 1 100th of a second because I was shooting at 1080. Uh, 50 so I want to double that so it'd be 1 100th of a second then I would do it just to keep the ISO as low as possible and then obviously just move the ND at the front until I get the exposure not clipping on any of the highlights so that's how I went about getting my exposure and the exposure was pretty good overall um, in the whole video clip I think I I may have just overexposed one fraction of part of the waterfall in one of the uh, the clips as well. But overall, I was very happy with how the exposure went. Uh, due to the fact that I was using the Sony A9 and also the A7 III, um, I had to make sure that I only used the standard profile because the Sony A9 doesn't have picture profiles. So I wanted to make sure the images matched totally. Uh, so I used the standard profile on each of them. So I did just have to make sure that you know I nailed the exposure as much as possible, kept the ISO down uh, as much as possible as well. But that whole system worked really well. Uh, there is a lock on the slider down here that uh, you know, like I said, when I turn that off, I could then do that nice sliding that I've got uh, that I'll show you as we're going through the images. Um, the only other thing I did was we had that up to the height of the dancer and then for these other ones where it went down very low I just basically clipped the legs as wide as they'd go and it almost touches the ground so that's how I'm getting these low, uh, this low look that you're looking at now uh, and I think that's really beautiful as well. It just gives a difference between um, having it up high and then I can shoot down low to get a different perspective uh, so that's how that uh, actually worked. Um, so what we'll do now is that that's the first part of the system. The second part of the system was I used this gimbal. Um, you can see here it's the uh, it's actually the Moser Aircross. Now the Moser Aircross is my favourite gimbal. I love it. Uh, it. It's fantastic. Now there's a couple of things that I've got on this. I do have uh, a small rig adapter that screws in through here. It's a handle that will attach here, and that's great because that gives me the ability to hold two hands onto this. Uh, you know, I have one hand down here and one hand on there. Also, if you're holding it fairly low down, you can hold on to this and it re really makes it nice and stable. But one of the other benefits of using this small rig handle is that you can attach monitors and things to it. I mean, you do have this point here where you can attach things. Um, you know, you can even put lights in or whatever else you wanted to put in there. This handle does move down and, you know, it'll go down or up. Uh, so you can move it to exactly how you'd like to balance it for yourself. But these are great because they'll turn around to any way you like them. They'll push forward and push back. This is another small rig uh, adapter here that I'm using, uh, just connected to this handle and also then screws directly into the, the monitor. Now I use the same thing here. I, I don't have follow focus on this, so I did have to uh, grab the, the actual lens and then move the lens to get focus. Uh, but I use the focus peaking on the small HD monitor that you're looking at down here. So that's how I got focus uh, through this. So all I would do is move it until I could see that it was in focus. And that worked very, very well. Um, and then all I had to do was obviously maintain that same distance to the subject. Uh, and I was very, very happy with how that whole system worked. Uh, this Moser Air 2 is uh, very good. Like it, it can take an awful lot of weight and the batteries just last all day. Uh, so I had no problem with hooking that up. Uh, at all. So that's how I did the um, uh, moving shots uh, as I've showed you a couple of those images as as we've gone on uh, and it works great. The great system with this is the uh, it just locks straight in so I can just click that out and then it'll, it'll lock straight back in this balance so you don't have to worry about that. You know you can add things like microphones and stuff like that uh, on all these different attachments as well uh, but that's the system that I use for the moving images that you just saw as well. So let me know what you think about the images anyway after you've looked at the full review um, or the full video that I did, the music video I did. I, I just love how it turned out. I'm really happy. Considering that I haven't really done this before, um, I found that the focus, because I was using the 
uh, Ninja V and also the small focus HD monitor, uh, it was really not too bad to keep focus. The only thing you've got to get used to, obviously, if you're dealing with manual focusing like that, is to keep that subject distance the same when you're using a gimbal uh, and things like that. But um, you know, overall, look, I really enjoyed it. I had lots and lots of fun. I love challenging myself, uh, and I, I really did enjoy using these lenses. Um, and it certainly has opened up my eyes now to a different system that's out there. Uh, like I said, I'm not a videographer, though, uh, so please take that in mind when you're viewing the video. Uh, but apart from that, had an absolute ball, and I'd like to thank C.R. Kennedy for and SLR Magic for giving me the ability to use these lenses. Um, and it was great fun. Apart from that, guys, I'll see you all in the next video. Bye for now.